Umoja ni nguvu, utengano ni udhaifu. That is a well-known Swahili proverb that means unity is strength, division is weakness. At first glance, I may not look like it, but I'm from Kenya, and I've always been a very proud Kenyan. I represented the country for over 10 years as an international swimmer, and was given the biggest honor of my life when I was chosen to carry the Kenyan flag into the opening ceremony of the London 2012 Olympic Games. My swimming career took me all over the world, and within that, many parts of Africa. I visited cities from Cape Town to Casablanca, from Dakar to Dar es Salaam, and I always felt incredibly at home in all of these cities. As I was traveling around Africa and competing, I was fiercely competitive and I wanted to do everything I could to get my hand on the wall first and bring a medal back home to Kenya. But at the same time, I formed deep friendships with many of the swimmers I was up against from just about every one of the 55 nations re um, recognized by the African Union. And I'm sure the implications of these experiences were seeded back then and be begun to germinate, but it's only over the last year that I've begun to understand their deeper meaning. I now believe it would be better for Kenya, Africa, and the world if Africa were to become more united. A more united Africa will mean a more prosperous Africa, and will finally complete the Africa rising narrative that is being told the world over. And in these times of rising nationalism and isolationism in different pockets of the world, a more united Africa could just be the inspiration the world needs for greater global unity. When I arrived at Stanford in 2016, one of the first things I did was um, interview for a position on the leadership team for the 10th Annual Africa Business Conference held here on campus. I was part of a group of students from all over Africa, and not only that, all over the world, and we worked hard to try to put on the most successful Africa business conference we'd ever had here at GSB. Pulled a lot of all-nighters, and we ended up putting on one of the most well-attended student-organized conferences in the history of the GSB. I was very proud, we were all very proud of what we had achieved, and as I thought about it, you know, it, again, the implications, they didn't really hit me. I'm at Stanford, of course I'm going to be a part of a high-performing team, right? <laughs> so, conference experience done, went back to work. Out of that experience at the conference, though, I started an interview channel and uh, sat down with some of my classmates, run some interviews, and many of them are actually in the audience today. And out of that experience, I got invited to go and cover the Silicon Valley African Film Festival that is held every year here in San Jose. At the festival, I was part of a group of people, again, from all over Africa, from all over the world, in fact, united in celebrating the unique cultures of different countries of the continent. But it really felt that we were all coming together with one voice in celebration. And as I was running around the conference trying to source interviews for the red carpet, I bumped into this one man called Ayuba Karamoko. As, we, as I started questioning him, I started to learn a little bit about him and that he's a musician, martial artist, teacher. And I'm asking where he's from, and he says, I'm from Africa. I said, yeah, most people here are. Can you be a little more specific? <laughs> so he grad grudgingly tells me that he's from the Ivory Coast. And uh, we continue our interview, and I'm thinking, OK, I'm, I'm not sure why he's being so grudging about this. And I asked him, you know, what, what brings him to the conference, and, uh, the, sorry, the film festival. And he talks about, you know, coming to support the African filmmakers that were there, but also that he's releasing a new album. The name of the album? The United States of Africa, Act One, The Awakening. And looking back, that spoke to a lot of what was going on for me, but I was still resistant. I was like, big idea, yes, but realistic, not so sure came back to Stanford, got back to work. And then I heard that one of my heroes was coming to Silicon Valley. And not just to Silicon Valley, he'd be coming right here to the GSB to speak on the very stage I'm standing on right now. 
His name is Strive Masiwa, and for those who don't know, he's one of Africa's great businessmen. He's built a telecoms business that spans the whole continent, connecting people, and he started it with just $500. He was persecuted under Mugabe's regime in Zimbabwe, and against all the odds, has built something quite incredible. And I was part of 20 students that were actually invited to come and have lunch with him after he spoke. And so we all assembled in Sewell boardroom of Bass Library to wait for him to enter the room. And as we're lining up, he enters the room, and I, I put out my hand to greet him, as, I always, as one always does. <laughs> and I instinctively say, sir, it's great to meet you. My name is Jason. I'm from Kenya. He doesn't say anything. So we're there holding hands. I'm clasping his. And he turns to the rest of the students assembled. And he says, I want you to introduce yourself, but I want you to say you're from Africa, and then tell me your town or city of origin. So I try again. My name is Jason. I'm from Africa and the city of Nairobi. And now the synapses in my head were firing out of control. Because I'd always been a little, I'd say, offended when people abroad would refer to Africa as if it were one country. And here was Strive Masiwa, one of my heroes, telling me not to vilify that kind of thinking, but to, in fact, encourage it. And the challenge he laid out to us as future business leaders in Africa was clear. In order to drive a more progressive development agenda, we have to become more united. As a complete market, Africa is 1.2 billion people, $4.4 trillion combined economy, youngest population in the world that is expected to double by 2050. He said this population growth could be a blessing or a curse, and it's incumbent on us to make sure it's a blessing. To do that, we need to become more united, so more goods are used internally. Increased trade between the thriving cities that I've been so lucky to visit. And we have to form teams like I was a part of at the business conference to lead organizations that can provide the jobs that will be needed. I'm not to say there's not going to be a lot of challenges along the way. This is a difficult proposition. But it doesn't mean it's not something we should strive for. I mean, it's often times that the things most worth doing in life are the most difficult. Since I last gave this talk six weeks ago, there have been some developments. And 44 African nations have now signed an agreement to create the African Continental Free Trade Area. It's a first step. And the momentum is there, but we must continue to accelerate it to get to a United States of Africa. Niraisi Zaidi kuvuka bahari tukiogelea Pamoja. It is easier to cross the ocean if we're all swimming together. Thank you. Thank you.